What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another special episode brought to you by Backmarkers of One, the podcast and the blog for a spa 75% race on expert mode as per usual. And this time it's featuring who else than my compatriot Jerome D'Ambrosio in his Marusha Virgin racing car. Uh, sadly, sadly, they're not quite up there in the midfield, but let's see, maybe I can drag them to places they have no business being. Um, this is again using the F1 2011 full conversion mod made by race department modders group RD Dev. Um, excellent mod, and I just, I realized during the last vid I did on Hungary, 75% race, Something must have cocked up in my install because the Pirelli tires and stuff weren't really working and there was a um, confusion with flags. Uh, but now this time everything's working like a charm. The Pirellis are degrading like your sister, 18-year-old at a drunk party. Okay, maybe that was a bit out of line, but who cares? We're in Belgium. I can do whatever I want. What the hell I want right now. Uh, in honor of my home Grand Prix in Belgium, I have opened up a Grimbergen, which is a special beer. It's a blonde beer. It's pretty good. It's uh, It's got this nice little phoenix up there. Nothing too fancy, but uh, it's it's more than a little regular, uh, whatchamacallit, Stella or Jupiler. So here we are for the qualifying lap, and as per usual, in beautiful Belgium, the rain is unpredictable as hell. So this is a quality lap, and I just went out straight away because I saw the sky was all gray, and you can already see the little raindrops dropping since the weather system is a bit quirky in F1 2010. Um, you can still have some dry running, but you need to be quick because one or two laps uh, down the line, it's going to be too wet, and you won't be able to set a very fast time. Um, so yeah, in the Marussia Virgin, man, it's been a, uh, it's been great seeing another Belgian in uh, Formula One. It's it's sad it's not in a better car, but let, let's be honest, Jerome, uh, even though he's a cool guy, he seems all right. Um, but you know, I didn't really um, rock the socks off anybody in GP2. He was very impressive last year in um, his Friday test for Virgin, which is one of the reasons he got the drive uh, in Virgins. Was impressive as well in the. Young driver's test in Abu Dhabi, um, uh, Boulye, who's uh, his manager through Gravity, slapped him in a Renault, and I think he had the third best time or something behind Ricciardo, and I don't remember who was P2. Did, did Van get a drive? I don't know. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, there's been people asking me, what with career mode? Um, it's dead. <laughs> no more career more vids for the time being uh, installing the mod does mess up your save so it corrupted my save and because it messes with the database file um, so yeah and I just don't have the the heart nor the time uh, to commit to a career mode so I'm gonna try like I said last time just do one vid whenever there's a real uh, F1 GP out and here I completely <laughs> cock up the final chicane um, there is an AI mod installed uh, in this 2011 mod um, but I don't think it applies to qualifying because this time, which is pretty poor, 147, 221, in, you know, pretty bad conditions, but still, you know, cocking up that uh, final chicane, is still going to nab me. Pole position, that's right, the Virgin and D'Ambrosio's pop the cherry. Oh, man, that was such a stupid pun, but I'm glad I got that one out of the way. And it's P1 for Jerome and Weber in second, uh, Fettel in third, and some other people behind. <laughs> you can check out your ledger. So you see all the flags are worked out. Cardi Kane's Indian. Uh, is still Italian, and the rest is now Brit. Or does he have a Scottish flag? I didn't even uh, notice. Didn't, didn't Coulthard run with a Scottish flag? I don't know. Hmm, interesting, interesting uh, stuff. So it's a 75% race, that's a good, I don't know, what, 45 minutes of racing? One hour? Uh, it's probably more like 45, 50 minutes of racing. Here's a setup, um, just purely stolen from Victor Anderson, a.k.a. Gris Fiske, uh, from the race department forums. He, The guy's an alien. If you think I'm fast, that guy, he's got a second on me on most tracks. Uh, an alien uh, in the purest sense. So go to racedepartment.com, setups forum, and you'll find all the setups there. Um, it's basically what I'm doing now. Since And here you see the Pirelli tires in, in effect. This is my race strategy. Uh, so first in on options, second in options, third in options, and then finishing on the primes. Just looking at the tire endurance. Only 12 laps, so you definitely see a big change um, to the Bridgestones of last year. And this is what makes it all the fun. Of course, it's only a month. Uh, a bit more than a month till um, the new um, F1 2011 comes out, but for now we'll make do with this uh, superb mod. 
Here we are at the grid, already pointing my car to the right to cut off a Webo, aka the, how I so lovely call him, the Aussie bastard. But he's still down the inside. Webo is not giving way, and he's got superb traction. Look at that, Vettel on the left, Webo on the right. Is Vettel gonna get ahead? Of his teammate Webo yet again. Yes, he does. Oh, damn you, German bastard. Oh, Webo's not giving in, though. And here with the heavy fuel. The car's understeering like a pig, of course. You know, on heavy fuel. And let's look at the start again in the instant replay mode. Oh, it looks good seeing that virgin with that all beautiful Belgian helmet on. Uh... Yeah, in uh, in pole position. It's not going to happen this year, but I hope Jerome can uh, show the Belgian fans something special. Uh, so there you see me getting mugged by the two Red Bulls, somehow keeping Hammy behind me, and Alonso looks like it closed behind him. Now we're coming up to Lecombe, and down the Weber's gearbox, but I'm not brave enough, and I break a bit early. And look at that! Oh, it's Lewis right beside me. You can just see it, his wheel. And he's got crazy traction on that McLaren of his, and he goes right through. Let's check that one out again as well. So yeah, I break a bit early, um, but with the heavy fuel, I didn't practice on heavy fuel. So I was better figuring better safe than sorry. And basically I knew I wasn't going to hold on to that position because the race pace of the AI is much better with this mod. It makes Spa really enjoyable to drive. Uh, it's really much fun. I think it's Glad AI mod. Glad or something. Glad, Glad 4. Something like that. Um, he's also the one who was responsible for the weather mod and uh, Sky. Um, so it's a different AI mod than what I was using before, but um, yeah, definitely a good one as well. Uh, makes him very nice through spot. There's only one corner where it may be a tad slow, and that's through uh, Blanchimont, uh, which will be coming up too soon. Here we're going through Fania. Let me take a sip here on my Grimbergen. Ah, gotta be a good Belgian. This beer's better be finished by the time uh, this show's done. I'm gonna be a hang my head in shame. So here we went through Stavolo. And all the oh, this is such an awesome piece of the racetrack. They don't make them like this anymore, people. Oh, Spa. So of course you heard the news that um, Spa's probably going to be alternating with the French uh, French Grand Prix. And France needs a Grand Prix. It's it's a monstrosity. Oh, look at that! A little spin corrected it uh, with the little brake slam trick and a little bit of uh, counter steering there, but managed to keep. Uh, and now Schumacher behind me. But there seems to be a good battle between Schumi and Alonso. They're neck neck and neck. Um, sadly can't really look behind me while I'm taking uh, La Soup's hairpin uh, But they have good traction out here and look at that Shumi is uh, fighting his, uh, well, his successor basically at Ferrari New number one lover boy uh, with uh, plenty of the Montezemolo man love But uh, yeah Shumi's not giving up uh, Let's hope he does well I mean Shumi's always been doing well around Spa uh, back in the day And the Mercedes even though it might not have the downforce it's got some good um, Top speed, they have one of the best DRS systems, that's pretty much the only thing they have close to the best. But their DRS system is very good in the sense of uh, shedding drag and uh, picking up a lot of straight line speed. They're usually near the top of the speed traps, um, flying by the Force Indias. So look for good performances from them. Uh, of course in the rain then as well, who knows, maybe Shumi might actually shine yet again, who knows. I'm really looking forward to that. I used to hate Schumacher's guts, but I just can't stand to see him. You know, in such agony, just failing race after race. Except for Canada. He was good in Canada. Who knows? Spa, changeable conditions. Schumacher, back to his old Rainmeister days with a car that should fairly be suited to the track. I mean, it's not going to be the fastest around there, but they got to good top speed at least. Yeah, he won't get mugged uh, like he did in Canada. Although well, he might. There's DRS. I don't know. I don't think they've denounced the DRS zones yet. I just hope it's not going to be ridiculously long on Eau Rouge because there's already uh, behind Eau Rouge because there's already plenty of overtaking uh, on the run down to Lacombe. So I really don't think DRS is going to be needed at Spa at all. Um, so if they do put it there, I hope they don't make it too long. They need to put it away, way behind Eau Rouge uh, just to give that final little oomph maybe. But, you know, not more than that. I'd hate to see another, you know, turkey or something. In Canada, to some extent, right, he's just phew, sailed by. Although, tell that to Mark Webber trying to overtake Schumacher. That didn't exactly go to plan. <laughs> he fucked up three times or something before he got through. In the process, of losing the spot to a button as well. Here you see the Pirelli mod coming into effect. Lap 3 of 33 and already 2. Wearing front tires. The brakes are cold. The brakes are cold. And we're uh, holding on to our P4. 
Um, sadly dropped back though, of course. Uh, but yeah, I just can't keep the pace with the front runners. I can keep Shumi behind me. They are pretty quick through the this the sec sector two. I don't have a lot of downforce on my setup. Uh, it's still pretty high for Spa. Usually I run at 1-1 one, one wing settings at Spa. But, um, you know, Victor, the master, puts 3-1 in, uh, which is also, also really low for him. Uh, he's usually got 11-1 wing settings, but even he recognizes that you need some top speed on this track. Uh, so yeah, 3-1 wing settings. You'll notice as well that as I come up to Lacombe for Sector 2, I put up the wing, just to give me that little extra bit of uh, front-end grip. Excuse me, if you see you hear silences like that for a second or two, it's me drinking my beer. Uh, like I said, needs to be finished before the end of this cast. So, <laughs> yeah, better. Um, yeah, Schumacher's back on my tail, you see. I mean, had a gap to him and then boom, back on my tail. Um, and they're a bit slower through Blanchimon, but it's much, much better than uh, in the Vanilla AI. They're, you know, you'll see me open up a gap here behind this corner. But, um, you know, it's still much better, you know. In the, in, in the Vanilla version of the game, really need to pay attention, not to... Like a ram into their ass because they break and shift down to third or something, it looks like. Uh, in Blanchimon. But, um, no, nah, here it looks good. AI mod's good. And, um, yep, there's the tires. We uh, jumped up ahead a couple of laps. Not much happened, as you can see. Just uh, the, the leaders building a gap. It's Fettel in front. Uh, in front of his teammate Weber and Hamilton. Ten seconds behind him. Uh, um, uh, four seconds behind him. And almost ten seconds ahead of me. And here we have Shumi. And you, ha you see, I mean, I'm struggling with terminal understeer like uh, Crofty's um, race dog. <laughs> and I got Shumi on the outside trying to make, keep it clean. But Shumi runs into the wall. Look at that. That's a nice little spin by Shumi. <coughs> and my apologies. And, uh, yeah, I am a little bit sick. It's been a crap summer this year in uh, Belgium. Uh, really rain, cold. And, yeah, terminal understeer, really, orange front tires, which means we are falling off the cliff. Better come in now. The Pirellis aren't holding up. And, really, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I mean, the car is just you now putting on the full lock and just sliding outside. Look at that. Just loss of, total loss of grip. And uh, I need to, like, lift off here a bit, which puts uh, Boemi, of all people, on my tail. Um, bit interesting. Uh, Boemi's been doing good. Uh, I'm wondering if who's going to keep that seat at Toro Rosso. But uh, for all that, stay tuned to the Back Markers of Fun podcast because uh, we're going to do a Silly Season special uh, with a special guest as well at Paddock Scout, um, who uh, has a site of his um, on the feeder series. It's an excellent website. I suggest you all check it out. And I probably should have pitted this lap because I have a red front tire. And now, now if I was struggling already with them, say, oh, two red front tires. Uh, rear tires are holding up all right, but uh, that's not going to help me with uh, front end grip, that's for sure. I got Massa on my ass now. Felipe, baby, be cool. Already through all rouge, struggling to keep the car on the road. And, of course, in Sector 2, that's where the, you need a strong front end. And, again, the brake's too cold. Yeah, like I was saying, uh, we got a nice podcast episode lined up. Um, I arranged everything now that we're on iTunes, um, on the blog, of course, backmarkersf1.wordpress.com. Uh, lots of blog posts. I have my buddy Matt Ruda, uh, aka Jim Muller5, who's joining me for all of that. And he joined as an admin as well of um, Backmarkers F1. So it's now a two man operation. And like I said, we'll have uh, Pete Allen, aka Paddock Scout, on for a special episode of a Silly Season podcast. Just see where everybody's hilting up. And uh, with Paddock Scout's expertise, oh, and look at that, Felipe got through, and that burns, you know, knowing uh, how much grief I give Felipe, and I realize sometimes I might go overboard, but you know, that's what it's about, and look at that, look at that, just falling off the cliff, everybody and their mama passing me from all sides, and, you know, that's what makes it so fun, though, this Pirelli mod, look at that, just, bam, three spots in three corners, and I just can't keep it, look at that, just slide all the way off, and, again, bam, one, two, bam, four, P4 to P8 on the final lap, so, yeah, I really should have pitted one lap earlier, but, you know, 2020 hindsight, and this, you know, it's just a game, but it gives you an insight into how delicate it must be for drivers and race engineers this year, just keeping their heads, you know, straight in these kinds of conditions. Plus, it's changeable conditions. It's looking like it. The sky's getting dark. And here we're heading into the pits. On lap 7 for our first scheduled pit stops. And the heart sinks because even the best modders cannot fix Cody's bad coding. Shame on you, fuckers. With the hype for 2011. Here, look at this. Okay. Good stop by the Virgin Boys. And there we go. 
Yeah. Luckily, I'm not driving a Renault, or those side pods would have overheat and the world blew me like uh, it went for Heidfeld. A 13 second pit stop and the whole field streams through. Thank you, Codemasters. I was two seconds away from just bidding the game and starting again. But then I figured, yeah, it might just as well happen next time. I've done eight laps now, so might as well just stick it out. But definitely compromises my race, so I'm going to need some balls to the wall action. So yeah, I went from P4 to dead last in one lap in a pit stop. So we're up again. Took me a while to catch up to Cardikeum. So yeah, that mod hasn't updated yet to put Ricciardo in it, or Ricardo, I know he calls himself Ricardo, but it's stupid. There's an eye there and it's not silent. Boom! Pass on Ricardo, let's just call it, oh, well, oh, Carter came, Ricardo, whatever you want. Uh, let's call it a DRS overtake, out a much better exit out of Ohuge, and that's what happens. Go straight through and had a good slipstream on it. But you can see, um, and someone's entering the pits, I think that was uh, Alonso, because he'll be ending up way, way behind me, uh... At this point, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was Alonzo. And uh, my teammate, Timo Glock, um, who's been doing an awesome job in the Virgin. I mean, people often overlook that because, you know, the car doesn't score points. And it won't score points unless a bunch of people DNF. And here, Boemi has a little moment going out of Eau Rouge. And boom, going around the outside. Easy pass. Uh, so, yeah, that's exactly why the DRS zone shouldn't be too long. Or we'll see too much shit like that. Um, but yeah, Timo Glock's been driving great this season. Uh, he's been really dragging the maximum out of the Virgin. You know, with their technical partnership, uh, they concluded with uh, McLaren. Um, you know, look for them to move up a bit on the grid, you know. Uh, it's going to be hard for them to catch Lotus. Uh, Team Lotus is really, really... They got a plan. and But now, you know, with Pat Simmons on board, uh, I don't know if he's going to stay as a consultant next year. Uh, Pat Simmons... Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he went to uh, Ferrari after his ban is over, which I think is only in 2000, after 2012. So it's not going to be for next year anyway. Um, but yeah, the Virgin have Pat Simmons as a consultant on board. And say what you want about Singapore, I, I love Pat Simmons. He's he's uh, one of the co-hosts of the Formula One Fan Vision podcast, which is the best um, strategic technical podcast on F1 around. Um, next to back markers of one, of course, because we are uh, technical geniuses. Because after all, we have uh, Mr. Newey Jr., uh, our um, space engineering or air, yeah, no, it's space engineering, right? Which uh, Matt is studying and can't have it on the show today because he is um, ready for a deforms exam. So, yeah, definitely, you know, be good to us. Maybe Matt's gonna hook us up with some uh, all access paddock uh, passes. Uh, <laughs> When he gets into F1, which I'm sure he'll do one day. I'm just the colorful commentator, but he's the one who's actually got the skills to have anything to say about F1. And here we are on Kovalainen's gearbox. I have a good way through on um, Eau Rouge. And that's a battle going on between Liuzzi and Schumacher. And again, breaking early. You know, it's getting wet, as you see. Spray starting to come off of the tires. And Schumacher's dicing it out with Liuzzi. Looks like Schumacher... Lost out badly as well in the pit stop phase. And this uh, allows him, well, allows him, makes his battle with him down in P18. So maybe he lost the front wing somewhere. Who knows? That seems to be his tendency uh, these last times. So maybe he's just not, you know, front wings used to be a lot less delicate and a lot less wide back in his heyday. So who knows? Just can't get his head around it. Who knows? First it was the, the Bridgestones. Uh, the Pirellis, he seems to be doing okay with. It's just a car that sucks on the Pirellis. They just cook the rear tires. And, um, you know, on, on heavy fuel in the start of races, that Mercedes is nowhere. Comes to life after a while. But, um, yeah, they really need to sort out their uh, issues on heavy fuel. And as for Virgin, uh, I just hope they have more um, coverage, <laughs> you know, on uh, on race weekends. The only way I can really keep an eye on what uh, Jerome D'Ambrosio is doing and Glock and their competitors in Lotus and HRT is by the um, live timing on the F1 website. Uh, that's the only way. And here we are. It's getting wet. Too much spray. The tires are dying. And we're going back into the pit lane. But not with cinematic view. Why not? Ah. <sighs> Oh, that's the first glass down, but I still got a little bit in my Grimbergen. Grimbergen. I just hate it when you're talking in one language and, you know, Dutch is my native language and I can easily pronounce Grimbergen. But, you know, when you do it in the middle of English sentences, you tend to pronounce this like English people who can't pronounce anything and always butcher names and stuff. 
So we are quite a bit ahead, jumped to lap 16, but uh, with that pit stop I dropped way behind. And nobody was spinning, except Kovalainen. And so yeah, again, the, the wonky weather system, you know, it's wet. I mean, look at my visor, it's all wet. But uh, nobody pitted. And it took me a while to catch up to Cardic Kane. Ooh, uh, that, that was that was dangerous maneuver. You know, I had to back step an and everything. Um, drive through penalty, for sure. Dangerous driving. It's pretty much what Boemi did to the high fall there. Uh, on the wet grass, somehow that counts at a corner cut. Don't know how. <coughs> and um, yeah, we get Cardic Kane again. So, not what I was expecting from this race, battling it out in the back with Cardi Kane. But finally, even though it's been wet for three laps, everybody and their mama's getting into the pits. But, you know, of course, they've been, since they were on slicks, they've been getting slick times and a lot of people passed me. Of course, there was the 10 second longer than it should have been pit stop. But we're ahead of Alonso, who uh, probably pitted again, I think. Um, it's hard to know what, what's going on with the people around. That's a good thing for 2011, I noticed. Um, there is a race director mode where you can see what other cars are doing. And boom, look at that. Schumacher still on the softs. Looks like he does have some issues right now. And we just breeze right past him. And that's Sebastian Boemi. Uh, is it Sebastian? Yeah, I think it is. And uh, Jaime Aguasuari. So the Toro Russells, as they are this season, close together all the way. Battling it out. They're going to be battling it out to the death near the end of the season. Uh, to see who's going to keep that spot. Because, you know, you can bet your bottom dollar that either Ricciardo or Ver Vergne or both are going to be in the Tyler Russell seat. So, Bremen Aguasuari, you know, just nab them right there. So, you know, finally making some headway from P24 to P15. Which, of course, if this would have happened in real F1, would be a huge, huge performance for uh, D'Ambrosio. Um, who has impressed me uh, in the beginning of the season. But, I don't know, he just doesn't seem to be up in his performance I mean, in the beginning expectations were low I mean nobody really knew him he wasn't that known from GP2 either he did win the Monaco race in GP2 uh, last year but ooh, look at that Aguasuari aggressive move up the inside nothing I could do and now we're just driving blind through Blanchimo that's not something you want <laughs> look at that now that's balls to the wall in here now I have to lift off and Aguasuari keeping his foot in and I got now Alonso, so Buemi had something going on. Alonso trying to take me around the outside, but I am oh no, Mr. Eyebrows, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> and at least I uh, keep him at. And it looks like Alonso went into the pits or something. I don't know. We're on lap uh, 18 of 33. Uh, so at the halfway mark, uh, well past the halfway mark, and you know P16. Yeah, and the inters are going off as well, because that's one of the cool things with these Pirellis. You know, the rain tires, it's not like they're cutting them a break. All the rain tires as well um, do degrade much, much more than the, um, than the Bridgestones. So we're up on lap, uh, still in the same position behind Aguasuari. And now Vitantonio Luzzi, and I don't know what happened there, but something must have happened there with Vitali Petrov. Because um, he was really slow all of a sudden. And he is on the Inters as well, so he's on the right tire. You can see the little blue. And did you know that the blue they have for the Inters is there for a specific reason? It's because it's the colors of Inter Milan. Uh, and of course, Pirelli is based in Milan. So I found that a little cool thing. And Paul Hembury of uh, Pirelli, pretty much the coolest F1 official on Twitter. I mean, the guy is just so open to questions. He's always answering pretty much anybody's question, no matter how stupid they are. And um, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Paul Henry is cool. And uh, what is less cool is Pirelli saying they're gonna ditch the hard tires. Hmm. You know, I don't want to jump on a bandwagon and say oh Ferrari assistance, but it is a bit dodgy. I mean, Ferrari have been nowhere on the hard tire, and they've been saying they hate the hard tire. The other teams, yeah, nobody really loved the hard tire, but they were getting along with them just fine. And you know, it's just coincidence, I guess, that. Ferrari hates the hard tire, and now Pirelli says we're not bringing the hard tire to races anymore. A bit dodgy, because Spa and Monza are traditionally tracks where Bridgestone used to bring the, the harder of their compounds. Because even though they didn't have the color differentiation, um, they still had four different compounds as well. Soft, super soft, and stuff. They just, you know, whatever was the prime or the option, they just slapped on the green. Um, or the white, but, you know... That's how Pirelli, uh, Bridgestone used to do it. And here we took, who was that? Oh, that's our teammate, Timo. Took Timo in on the breaking here. That was a pretty nice move, if I say so myself. So we're back up to P15. And anything can happen in the rain. But it's it's not heavy rain, you know. Pretty much the whole time, 
it was just drizzling, you know, not, not really a downpour, which you can have sometimes in uh, Belgium, which happened, what was it, in 98? Oh, if you haven't seen that, go uh, on YouTube, check out the Belgian Grand Prix start in 1998, where I think it was Coulthard who started all the mayhem. And uh, out coming out of uh, the source hairpin, he spins it around and pretty much every body crashes into one another. It's carnage. It's the most messy F1 start ever. Of course, back in the day, he still had spare cars. So the guys could still um, get into their spare cars, and most of the, most of the people uh, managed to um, manage to continue through the race. I think on the restart, Schumacher tapped Hakkinen and spun him around or something like that. But uh, of course, Hakkinen came out on top in the end in the WDC. But here we're on lap 21 of um, 33, still drizzling though not raining hard, and you know those uh, inters are getting a bit worn. So I am starting to consider. You know, pin again, getting some fresh tires on, but, you know, the, the whole race strategy is just thrown out. And since we don't have a good race engineer, you know, nobody to calm me down saying beautiful job, sunshine, or a good boy like uh, good old Rob Smedley. I mean, Rob Smedley's an awesome race engineer. I don't remember who said that. I think it was Brunel last Grand Prix. Because uh, he, he really gives driving tips and stuff to Felipe Massa, like earlier on the throttle, later on the throttle, earlier turning. And Brundle kind of made a made a little joke about that, saying, you know, um, that Smedley's wasted as an engineer, should be driving the car. But uh, yeah, coolest race engineer um, around, that's for sure. And I was close to putting in the Felipe Baby Be Cool uh, when he was asking for a white visor uh, <laughs> team radio bit uh, in the intro for, to the Back Mark as a Fun podcast. But, you know, I didn't want to make it too long. It's already a minute long. And I figured I'll just focus it on what's happening these days you know 2010 2011 uh but so much good team radio and it was a uh, marvin's idea a uh, loyal follower on twitter and he said um why don't you make an outro so who knows maybe i'll make an outro with some more uh nice team radio uh definitely enjoy that when i get around to doing that uh cp15 we got vitali in ahead of us and paul the resta behind us so something must have happened to the rest of you just saw a little glimpse of my tires. They were getting a bit uh, orange. So that's that's something you never really want to happen. Uh, and ooh, even the rear tire is orange now. And this is a tough decision. Do I continue to see what happens to the rain? You still see it's still drizzling. The track is wet. There's standing water. There's some puddles left and right. And so I'm going to have to choose. Do I go to options? I can't really. I mean, it's there's no dry line forming or anything. So, yeah. With the experience of once the tire hit red, which it just did, luckily, um, and the terminal understeer that gave me, I figured, a uh, better pit, I'm going to slap on to a new set of uh, Vinters. And, you know, see how that uh, goes on. We're, of course, going to drop back on the field again. At least nobody else in the pit this time, so I should get a decent enough pit stop, let's hope. There's been some uh, interesting analysis on uh, f1fanatic.co.uk. Uh, slightly more popular blog than mine. Uh, it's only for now. We just started. <laughs> and um, it was analyzing the, the pit stop speeds, who were the crack teams in the pit stops. And not so surprisingly, uh, Red Bull's the fastest. So we were on lap 25, jumped ahead a bit, nothing really happened. P19. And um, But the, the one surprise really was uh, Force India, who were uh, amongst the fastest. Of course, they had that cock up with uh, Paul Resta in uh, Silverstone, where Sutil's tires were ready. But otherwise, apparently Force India has been among the quickest teams. Uh, McLaren haven't been the quickest, but they've been very consistent. Uh, but, of course, tell that to Jensen Button in Silverstone. Silverstone, a lot of messed up pit stop. Look at that, Barrichello, Glock, I have nowhere to go, but so I'm going to go around the outside of both of them. Am I going to break late enough and brave enough? Yes, I do. And, well, that, that's a bit of a reminiscent of um, hacking on, on Schumacher while they were overtaking uh, Ricardo Zonta, um, who was getting lapped uh, at exactly the same spot. That's a classic overtake um, on how to use a back marker to gain an advantage. Uh, it was pretty awesome. So we're up two spots, up to P17. Points finish, <laughs> eh, looking a bit unlikely, I must admit. Uh, tire strategy was was difficult to, to judge in these circumstances. It's still drizzling lightly, but there seems to be a little bit of a dry line developing now. So basically now I'm just hoping, I'm hoping, can I get through this race 
without changing to the select tires you know can I just go through here without having to pit again and will the tires hold up because um, you know I don't think your driving style matters this much yet in in the game uh, but I sure hope it will in F1 2011 you know uh, those who are more aggressive on their tires will need more pit stops and stuff so you can have like a Jensen Button Lewis Hamilton dynamic going on in any way there's a lot of people coming into the pits and this kind of gives me a wee feeling but also a sinking feeling like oh boy they're probably gonna put on slicks now aren't they so look at that a lot of people in the pits uh, if we're lucky everyone might get up in the points so definitely it's a matter of holding on and trying to just hold on and stay in there so let's uh, when the timing updates let's see where we end up p9 that's right points for the ambrosio and virgin provisional points of course with five laps to go we are in p9 there's still light light drizzle but it seems to be abating look at the sky this is a more light sky but still spray off the cars but you can definitely see uh developing and button just drives clean around the outside and i think i just saw he is on slick tires yeah that makes a lot of sense but button is the damp meister <laughs> i read that on some forum i find that an incredibly good nickname for button you know assume he'd been the raid meister well button's the damp meister you know gotta give him to him all his uh, McLaren wins. Look at that. Just understeer. Bam. Right out of there. And again. Damn it. Felipe. Felipe goes through. And Felipe is on the on the slick tires. So, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. But if you look at this track, it doesn't look like slick to me. But seeing those AI cars pass me and having superior grip. And, you know, it being dodgy that these enters would get it to the finish. I'm probably making up my mind now and saying, yeah. I'm gonna have to pit if I wanna, you know, have any chance. Yeah, look, you definitely see he was on the on the dry tires. I have a little spin there too. Should have came in, didn't come in. My bad. Um, I should have known better. It doesn't look like uh, dry weather, but if the AI is on the dry tires, then it the game counts as dry. Um, even if you go into wet patches and stuff, you won't spin out or anything or aquaplane off. I uh, really hope they improve on that, yeah, but there's a little bit of a dry line developing though. Should have just followed Button, the damp Meister knows what to do. Gotta be, I really do wanna, I mean, Button's my main man, I'm, um, if I have to, if I have to give a favorite, it's Button. That's my number one F1 driver, um, it's not the only one I like, of course, but, um, I really wanna see him do it in the, in the dry, you know, normal race, he's got the pace, man, do it in the dry for once. Silence those critics saying you can only win on strategy. Um, Button's quick, you know. He just needs to, you know, needs to up his qualifying performance, really. And he did in Hungary. He was P3, uh, very close behind uh, Lewis. So now we're on lap 29. I still haven't come in, but now we see definitely there's no more rain falling. The sky's clearing up. It's another typical Belgian summer day, and I have red front tires. So yeah, okay, this is pit stop time. Gonna go for some Banzai laps, the last four Banzai laps, and bam, that leaves through a little train of three people that were right behind me. And if I'm lucky, I might not end up behind the little train there. You can see on the mini map coming in, but the pit lane, it's not really long compared to other tracks. It's actually one of the shorter pit lanes around, but it still just feels an eternity. But yeah, I had to pit anyway. My enters weren't gonna last, so. Why not pit? Should have pitted earlier. Let's face it. Should have pitted when the AI pitted. But, you know, shit happens. Strategy is a difficult thing. And here I see a De Resta. He forced India ahead of us. And we're back down in P20, which is quite um, sad and frustrating. And here, the grip you get from these tires is pretty insane. I mean, you can see uh, what Brundle's saying. Usually in relation to Hamilton, like that you, it's tempting to take too much out of tires in the beginning. <laughs> the the mod really captures that because you know they got so much grip in the first two laps uh it's a lot of fun it's a bit like a cheat because i'm sure that it has more uh regular grip than you would have in the in the modded in unmodded game when you have the new options on but you no know, it reflects reality of course but yeah you feel like you can fly and have so much more confidence in the car we're gonna try to take the rest of on the inside down to pull home but yeah i don't want to take him out either and kind of missed the corner because I had to turn in very sharply. I was a bit too optimistic. Lost some time there. And, you know, let's see what we can drag out of there. Points finishing. <laughs> Maybe if everyone in front of me pits, who knows? The AI is dumb in the game. 
But, um, yeah, not looking too good for when it comes to that. At least there's a decent gap to Buemi, who uh, seems to be way, way behind. Um, still no time showing up for him. And we're a minute and five behind Weber. Uh, at least we won't get uh, lapped this time around, which is uh, always fun. I don't think I've ever been lapped um, in the game. So that's a good thing. I uh, hope that version can accomplish this uh, in the near future. But with the pace of the front runners, it's going to be hard. At least, you know, immediate focus. There's a little bit of a train of cars ahead of us. So if we're lucky, we might just pick up some good solid points. It's not like there's just one solid guy ahead. There's the rest of here fighting with Carter Kane. We got two more laps to go. Who knows? Yeah, Glock in, uh, was it P15? So he must be heading that train. It's only four seconds ahead. So who knows? I got fresh tires. I'm feeling fast. Smell my speed. And that's a third overtake this race of Carter Kane. So we definitely have the speed of the HRT at least. And boom, two spots at once. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that on the right. It's Glock. Glock had a little moment and is off into the gravel. That's a bit of a shame for uh, Timo. I'm lucky I didn't get a penalty there for overtaking on the yellows, even though the guy's in gravel. But um, yeah, sadly, it's my teammate, Timo Glock, who um, had a little moment there. Maybe got on the wet curb like Petrov did last year. <laughs> You remember that when uh, Petrov um, spun off, I think it was in, in qualifying, into the wall, and he said, oh, what happened? Yeah, I went over the curb, see if it was wet. And, well, if it's wet at curb and you drive over it, you're going to spin out. Exactly what happened. And, you know, that that gets my mandatory Petrov bash out of the way, you know, couldn't, couldn't be a... Uh, a proper uh, vid if I didn't get one Petrov bash in. <laughs> I know you people get tired from the Petrov bashing, but... Um, you know, see how he does in the next part of the season. Um, I think it's looking increasingly likely Heidfeld's going to lose his seat. Um, and Renault would be right. He hasn't been doing anything spectacular this year. Um, so why not give a young shot uh, his shot? <laughs> a young gun his shot. There's Heidfeld in front of us, as, as we say. Um, so I want to give him a shot because yeah, they have Romain Grosjean who... I don't know. Does he deserve a second chance? You know, the dude, yeah, he's, he's doing really well in GP2, but he's got a lot more experience than the guys he's fighting against as well, so he should be dominating, really. Anything else would be failure. But still, he's doing it. Um, but then there's Bruno Senna. Bruno Senna as well. Um, I really would want to see more than Grosjean. I want to see Bruno Senna in the car. Who knows? You know, uh... Maybe Renault is going to put him in the car for Brazil. Uh, if I were Grosjean, I would be a little bit afraid to get back in the car for, again, a couple of Grand Prix near the end of the season. If I were Grosjean, Grosjean I would say, screw you guys. I either want to race seat for a full season, do the whole testing and everything with you guys. And, you know, otherwise you can go fuck yourself. Well, he's not in a posi position to because I don't think anyone else would pick him up. Um, except maybe a backmarker team if he finds enough sponsorship. But, um, yeah, I don't think it would be a wise move for Grosjean to get into a Renault at the end of the season. Look at that! Taking out of height for around the outside. And who knows? Maybe Truly around the inside. There we go. Making up some headway. But Truly's not giving up. Truly's having a good finish here for P15. We're on the penultimate, penultimate lap, of course. The That's Barrichello ahead of us or Maldonado. And we're setting a fast lap here already. The fastest lap in the race is faster than my quality lap. Just uh, shows you how much I botched that. And get a nice slipstream off of Truly. Uh, taken around the outside into Blanchiment. And boom, back on the home stretch for the final, final um, lap. We got uh, Liuzzi ahead of us. Damn HRT, you're not going to beat me. And Barrichello. Uh, Rubens, Rubens, Rubens. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's been uh, fighting to death to keep his seat at Williams. I don't see anyone else except Williams hiring him, so he really should. There you see the updated sponsorship. Venezuela on the back of his car. So we might get him here if he has a bad exit. Oh, look at that. It goes way wide. And boom. That's through. Thank you, Rubens. And might we get Liuzzi as well here? Again, picking up the draft. Yes, we're not going to let an HRT finish ahead of us now, are we? We are freaking virgin racing that's right and p13 so okay and we got again vitali ahead of us and it's been hard to catch vitali this race has been going well and we've been even lapping faster than weber because we're only one minute and one second behind him now so who knows what would have happened without that messed up pit stop 
the first pit stop which took me way too long uh, probably wouldn't have won it but would have been a points finish I'm pretty sure about that but ah, p13 is not too bad who knows Vitali might throw it in the wall here and um, give us another spot there's someone else ahead of him but yeah p10 seems to be way ahead tires are going off again <laughs> they're they're yellow again it was a good move pitting because trying to stick it out on the inters that would have been a bad move because <laughs> the track is completely dry now and in a classic spa francochon race wet dry wet dry and drizzle and yeah just let's just well, in a way i want it to be a dry race it can really gauge uh, team's performances I already found it a bit of a shame hungara ring was wet dry i mean sure it makes for great races but makes it harder to judge where each car stands in relation to each other or at least you know have a dry quality session so you can see the raw pace but there we go mark weber wins the grand prix Jerome D'Ambrosio is pretty happy with his P13, uh, would be a season best for him and for Virgin, and that would put them equal with uh, the HRTs, or maybe ahead, because then it's going to be who had the most P14s, and I don't exactly have those stats uh, at hand. P13, Petrolhead, Sutil Perez, Aguasuare, Maldonado, Massa Button, Kobayashi, Vettel, Rosberg, Hamilton P2, and Weber P1, so Rosberg uh, managing to get on the podium. Uh, looks like uh, Shumi didn't have the greatest of races. Yeah, 22nd. Alonso didn't either. Uh, so they were struggling uh, in the rain in Spa. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'll be leaving for Nigeria soon. But uh, maybe make one or two more vids before I leave. Uh, of course, the Backmarkers F1 podcast never stops. Stay tuned for next week for the next Backmarkers F1 podcast, episode 2. And check out the blog, backmarkersf1.wordpress.com. Leave me your feedback uh, on Twitter at TheVillainF1. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And peace out.